All the different emitter flow rate options out there can be confusing from a half gallon per hour dripper, a two gallon per hour dripper, a 10 gallon per hour bubbler. Today, I'm going to show you what considerations and factors to account for when deciding on your emitter flow rate, whether it's a dripper, a bubbler, an adjustable dripper, or a spray jet. This video goes in depth into the details of flow rate selection, but if you're strapped for time, I highly recommend you check out our drip irrigation kits. These kits are designed and tested by our team of experts to have exactly what the typical garden or landscape needs. Plus, they're easily customizable, just in case you learn through this video that your project has specific needs. Check out our drip irrigation kits in the top right or in the description below. All right, let's get into it. One of the main considerations when deciding on your emitter flow rate is going to be your soil type. When choosing between higher or lower flow rate emitters, the properties of your soil are going to play an important role. For example, clay soil has a low soil infiltration rate. It absorbs water slowly. Where sand has a high soil infiltration rate, or it absorbs or drinks down the water very quickly. For example, on a clay soil, we're going to want to go with a lower flow emitter. That's because water has a hard time penetrating the surface and absorbing into clay. So if your emitter flow is too fast, water is going to build up on the surface. And when water builds up on the surface, a couple different things can happen. It can either start to run off or it can evaporate, neither of which are desirable in an irrigation system. And if your water is running off or evaporating, that means you're basically wasting water because it's not getting to your plants. On sandy soil, not only can it benefit from a higher flow emitter so that there's enough water volume to spread out, but it can also benefit from higher flow area coverage emitters. Because the water will sink so quick, the area coverage helps ensure you can get to your plant's root zones. And if it's also higher flow, it ensures that it's enough water that even if a lot of it sinks down below the root zone, the roots will have had a chance to absorb some of the water. If you're unsure what kind of emitter you'll use for your plants, You'll want to check out our video on the four main drip irrigation emitters and when to use them, linked in the top right or description below. Another factor that goes into choosing emitter flow rate is going to be your planting density. If you've got a very densely planted section, it's going to be better to have multiple low flow emitters rather than fewer high flow emitters. Notice how the single high flow emitter provides a quick but uneven burst of water. Take note of the water pooling up and also look closer and notice the erosion taking place at the drip point. Now, take a look at these evenly spaced low flow drippers. No pooling up, no erosion, and most importantly, a slow creeping curtain of water that evenly wets an area. Because it moves so slow and uniformly, it's easier to control and trust that your soil is evenly moist without diving too deep for your plant's roots to reach. If it's too high a flow, you have a risk of getting the roots of your plants too wet, and when roots are too wet, things like root rot can set in. So it's better to have multiple low flow in your densely planted section it is than to have fewer high flow emitters. Plant type and plant maturity also has an impact on the flow rate of the emitters you want to choose, particularly if you're growing with other plants with differing water requirements on the same zone. For example, if you are growing a non-native thirsty tropical plant on the same zone as your common vegetable garden, you would want a higher flow rate emitter for the tropical plant so that it would get the water it needs with the same watering cycle as the other plants in your garden. For example, many leafy greens have shallow root systems. Shallow root systems are best fed by lower flow emitters. For the same reason we mentioned previously, you don't want too much water to collect in these shallow roots because you might induce root rot. In contrast, if you have soil with good drainage or sandy soil, you may waste a lot of water that washes out past the plant's root zone, beyond the point where the plants can access it, possibly washing away nutrients with it. Likewise, younger plants tend to have shallower root systems, so also benefit from lower flow rate emitters. But what happens when that plant grows up? You don't want to have to be constantly changing emitters in and out. That's when something like an adjustable emitter makes a good choice. You can start at low flow when it's young, doesn't need a lot of water, has a shallow root system, and then as it matures and grows larger and its roots become more established, you can turn up the flow rate on that emitter until it's at the rate that keeps it properly hydrated. Adjustable drippers are a great choice if you're adding a new plant to an existing zone full of mature and established plants, or in an annual bed or garden where you'll be starting a new every year while your mature perennial plants water needs stay constant. But in many cases where you're adding a drip irrigation system to an established landscape or have a dedicated zone for your garden, standard drippers will work just fine where you can adjust the water cycle as watering demands rise or drop. So. What are high flow drippers used for? So far, it sounds like they're for the birds. In commercial landscaping, we often see 
fewer high flow emitters installed to save labor time on the installation. High flow emitters are also used in nurseries and indoor commercial grows where they connect to a multi outlet manifold at the outlet of the dripper to essentially split the flow so that a single dripper can water multiple plants. But what about you, the home gardener? There are some uses for higher flow emitters, like on thirsty plants that are on the same zone as plants that have lower watering requirements. These plants could be thirstier because they're a tree, large shrub. It could be a tropical or non-native plant or because they experience more direct sun exposure throughout the day. So the soil they grow in dries out much faster. In this illustration, you can see that a large south side tree from a neighboring property casts a shadow, creating an uneven distribution of sunlight throughout this garden bed. This may affect the watering needs of these plants in the shade, regardless of whether they're the same variety or maturity as the plants in more direct sunlight. In this example, if you have a zone that runs for 20 minutes and has some plants that need less water than what the rest of the zone needs, you can bump up the flow rate on the emitters in direct sunlight so those plants get the water they need during that watering cycle. Now, you could also just add multiple low flow emitters to reach the plant's watering requirement. But this is where your preference comes in on whether you aesthetically want a bunch of emitters surrounding the plant and if you want to spend the extra time connecting more drippers to your line, which also take up extra materials like tubing and fittings. However, using more precise low flow emitters is the optimal way to irrigate with one big exception. And that's pretty limited because it's just exceptionally fast draining sandy soils. If you need to go with higher flow rate emitters for one of the reasons I've mentioned, keep the trade-offs in mind. Going with a high flow emitter can cause soil erosion, evaporation, runoff, and lost nutrients by washing the nutrients out of your soil. Here's a chart you can pause the video on or check out at a link in the description below that offers general flow rate recommendations depending on your soil and plant type. Water quality can also have an impact on the flow rate emitter you choose. A lot of people with poor water quality with for example, with a lot of sediment, like to go with higher flow rate emitters because those higher flow rate emitters have larger orifices that will pass more of the debris. Now, with that said, in cases of poor water quality, I think it's always better to manage and use proper filtration to prevent clogging instead of larger orifice emitters. But if you're using a gravity system where sediment might be inevitable, it might be better to use a high flow dripper or even just a coupling valve as a dripper, like we did in our gravity system project video. And that leads me to the next section, which is your main line and material costs. If you go with a bunch of higher flow emitters to pass more sediment, you might have to buy a larger diameter main line to handle all that extra flow. And this could increase costs exponentially in some cases. The jump in cost from a half inch line, whether it's tubing or pipe, to a one inch is pretty extreme. In a case like that, Though you have to spend on a filter, it's going to be much more cost effective than buying hundreds or possibly thousands of feet of a larger diameter main line. You've got to think when you jump up sizes of tubing, that means all of your fittings are bigger and therefore more expensive as well. In addition to requiring a larger main line, if you choose all higher flow emitters just to have larger orifices, you might overtax the flow rate of your water source. For example, if your water source flows at 500 gallons per hour, but you picked a lot of high flow emitters that add up to 700 gallons per hour, some of those emitters are going to be starved of water because 500 gallons cannot feed 700 gallons. Terrain can also have an impact on your emitter flow rate. For example, on slopes, at the top of the slope, it's better to use something that's a lower flow rate. Why? Because if water starts pulling up on the surface on top of your slope, it's going to run down. Now, runoff is already bad, but when it's running down that fast, it becomes even worse because it causes significant erosion, kind of like you're seeing start to happen right here. As you can see right here, water is flowing on the slope and then running down. And this is going to erode some of our topsoil here. But in addition to that, you can see it's hitting the stones that are here. And that is a complete waste of water. We can't grow our stones. A good solution here could be to move the emitter or to opt for a lower flow emitter so that it's not pulling up and running off like that. Now, this might not apply to everyone, but in some of the drier states or drought stricken states, we're starting to see water restrictions where you only have a certain window in which to irrigate your landscape or garden. In these cases, a higher flow emitter can benefit because then you get the volume you need despite having a shorter window in which to deliver it. Perhaps the most important thing to keep in mind in selecting your emitter flow rate is don't overthink it and don't be scared of a little bit of trial and error. As you can see here, there's not a gigantic difference between a half gallon per hour dripper 
and a one gallon per hour dripper. But now, when you get to the two gallon per hour drippers, as you can see, the flow rate starts to get pretty high. And there's even four gallon per hour drippers. And that might not sound like much, but it's a lot of water. Look at that two gallon per hour drippers. It's already pooling up and running down to the one gallon per hour dripper flow. Are you worried about water pulling up on your soil like this? If so, check out the video right here to learn how to determine your soil type.